Everybody all set? All right. Well, we will welcome everybody to the meeting tonight. This is the City of Sandy Planning Commission. It's Monday, January the 30th, 2023. This meeting is held in hybrid format, both in person and Zoom. Uh, we'll get directions later on when it comes time for testimony about how um, people can participate. But before the next thing, we to find out who's here and give a roll call. Uh, Commissioner Wagner. Here. Uh, Commissioner Poulin. Here. Commissioner Hook. Here. Commissioner Lee. Here. And Chair Sosby. Here. That gives us the quorum. All right, you had packets, minutes from the, uh, oh, forget that. You got something else before that. This is our annual time to um, select, appoint, or however we decide to do it, um, the chairman and the vice chair for the next year. Can you confirm that they can still hear us? We're getting some weird feedback there. Okay. Can the other commissioners hear? Yes. Yes. Try again. Can um, can all you commissioners hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay. Commissioner Hook, can you hear me? Yes. All right. Well, we have our first task tonight is to select a uh, chair and a vice chair for the next uh, for this year for 2023. Um, uh, Kelly put in the uh, packet uh, page. So we can nominate for appointments. We normally kind of do it informally, but end up with a motion. I would like to nominate you, Chair Crosby, because the rest of us have been on this commission a fairly short time, and whoever is vice chair will have a chance to learn. I'd like to second that. That's, and this is just so you know, this would be uh, my second year of our new two year term thing. But we still would need a vice chair. Anybody, anybody, let's just ask to be, you know, be honest. <laughs> if, if it's something you're interested in doing, um, say so. Don't be bashful. This is Stephen. I'd be interested. Okay. I second that. Any other discussion on that? Then we just take a, somebody put together a motion. Kelly gave us the words at the bottom. Uh, I move to appoint Commissioner Crosby as the chair, and Commissioner Hook as the vice chair of the Sandy Planning Commission for the calendar year 2023. I second that. Okay, it's been moved and seconded to appoint uh, Commissioner Crosby as chair, Commissioner Hook as the vice chair for this calendar year. And we'll just do a voice vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed or abstentions? Okay. We will move ahead. Now we can go to the minutes. We had draft minutes from the November 28th. Uh, 2022 meeting. Anybody have anything they want to uh, 
uh, any corrections, additions, changes that they saw that need to be noted? Okay, with nothing heard, we will consider them approved as presented. This is the time when we give opportunity for anybody in the audience uh, to give any comments to the Planning Commission uh, related to things that are not on tonight's agenda. And um, just now, so if you want to do that, to speak to the Planning Commission, uh, if you're on Zoom, just click the um, raise hand button and wait to be recognized. And if you are participating by phone, then it's star nine to effectively raise your hand and um, wait to be recognized. So if there's anybody that just wants to have comments, general comments to the commission. Now's the time to step, step forward figuratively or literally. Yeah, I was kind of thinking a little off the cuff here, but I was thinking moving forward, this might not be a bad opportunity either. Chris, if you have any comments from like the city council, it's something I was going to actually change for the next agenda to have a spot on here for you. Um, because I, I felt like I've never done that the last couple of years since uh, Councilor Sheldon was on here. So I don't know if you have anything you want to talk about. Or, I don't want to put you on the spot, but I realized I've never really added a, an agenda spot. Yeah, for... yeah, it's good to recognize <clears throat> the liaison. Well, you did put me on the spot. <laughs> so, so for the record, Chris Mayton, uh, city councilor. You don't need my address, right? No, 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 no. Well, perfect. Uh, since I've only been at city council for uh, the better part of four weeks, I don't have any update to provide to the planning commission other than I am your new liaison uh, for city council. So, uh, which, you know, after being here on this chair, on this commission for almost five years, it, it's a pleasure to be back. And I'm glad to not have to leave the group anywhere. Um, <laughs> And I essentially I'm learning my my role um, as a liaison for the planning commission. I'll mostly just take the minutes that, that you send out um, and regurgitate those back to the, the council. Um, and then anything that comes up during the council that pertains to land use, uh, I'll bring back to, to this unit. And uh, I would have to get in at, at the future meetings if, if something goes you know, on the table like that. Mm -hmm. Other than that, thank you for the four years, nine months I was on. <laughs> I sat in that chair. <laughs> so yes. now, I, now I sit in that one on a different, on a different thing. So thank you for uh, Chair Crosby for you know helping me evolve uh, into who I am today as a, as a company. That's right. I thank you for that. Well, thanks. We're thankful for where you are. We, we miss you here. <laughs> but we're thankful for where you are, too. And we've got lots of applicants. So the commission's come a long way in five years. So mm -hmm. that's good. Uh -huh. Thanks. Thank we can move right to your report, Kelly. Yeah, I was going to keep it pretty short today. I, I unfortunately didn't have an opportunity to put a written report together like I typically do. Um, what I was going to give you an update on a few different things. Um, one was that uh, Councillor Mayton is going to be our liaison, which I believe you mostly knew from an email I sent earlier last week. Mm -hmm. Um, another update is I'm actually one of our staff members who's been here a little over four years. She took a job with Northwest Natural. Um, so we're going to miss her. Her last day is this Friday. And so if you see a new job um, opening on the city website, that is for that position, most likely the permit technician too. Um, so if you know anybody with any permit software <laughs> background, please let them know that there's an application open for a few more weeks. Uh, We'd love to get a lot of applications and be able to have a really good candidate. It's a, it's actually a pretty hard demanding job to be quite honest, because you have to deal with quite a bit of, quite a few angry customers at the front counter. Um, a lot of pretty um, prescriptive code, um, and a lot in a pretty busy permit counter to be honest. So I know I'm not selling the job very well right now, but um, yeah, I think it is a pretty fun job. It, there's a lot of autonomy actually in it as well because um, they are the one running the permit counter. Um, but just so you know, um, for people in the community to hopefully be patient with us because a um, year and a half ago, we had three people up there and now we're down to one person uh, mm. for a while. So 
there's a few other departments that are stepping up to the plate and really helping us out and having some people come down a couple days a week. And then Marisol, the person that is leaving, uh, she gave us a phenomenal offer to kind of work remotely on the side here and there a little bit, a few hours a week, just to kind of answer any inquiries or any issues we're having. So it's going to be a pretty big change for our department. We're a small department. So when you have even one staff member leave, it's, it's a pretty big change. And then I was going to give an update also on um, where we're sitting with the moratorium. We've issued, as of today, I think 23.7 ERUs. We issued three houses today. Um, we have another seven or seven or eight houses we'll be issuing in the next couple of weeks. And then some apartments as well. So we'll, we'll be down to probably about um, 70 or 80 ERUs come the end of February or March. Um, the positive thing though is um, we've had some preliminary estimation going on based on um, sewer flows this winter as opposed to previous winters. And it looks like a lot of the, the fixes we've been making at the sewer treatment plant and also in the pipes that were leaking throughout town have been working. So mm. we're very, uh, we're cautiously optimistic that all the work and money that the city's put into it and all the ratepayers have as well um, is gonna pay off and we're gonna have a lot more ERUs available uh, you know, after the stress tests and after everything's performed. Um, so more news on that. It's, it's, it's most likely that the city council is going to have to enter into an extension of the moratorium um, just because the stress test timing and when uh, we'd be coming to terms with how many additional year use we'd be able to have in the system, it's just not going to time out. So there's going to be, have to be a gap there, but um, just pay close attention at city council. They should be coming back uh, at one of the March meetings and taking another look at the moratorium and seeing if they need to extend it or not, and then seeing how long they're going to extend it for. Um, so that that's coming. Uh, we probably have plenty of other things. The, the, the clear and objective audit, which we have a contract for with MIG APG, we're working our way through that. As you can imagine, that takes quite a bit of time. Uh, the TSP actually finally the final documents being written on that after four or five years. And uh, we should be going through adoption in May and June. That's what's set on ODOTS and our DKS's calendar. And then the comprehensive plan, we're starting to review the different blocks and look at our vision and goals within those blocks. And so you'll be seeing more of that at future city council meetings and you'll be being invited to work sessions with council. I think you're gonna be invited to three work sessions over the next eight or nine months regarding the comprehensive plan. You'll probably be invited to at least one on the clear and objective audit and at least one on the TSP. And that's that's in addition to the hearings that will occur here at the planning commission. So, mm -hmm. and then the, the last thing um, is the application process for McLean Wenzel and um, Mayton two spots. Um, we did get 12 applications for the people didn't qualify due to residency restrictions. And then there was eight people, um, a panel reduced that number to five. And I believe the interviews are happening this Thursday. Thursday. And Chair Crosby is on the panel along with uh, Mayor Pulliam and Councillors Walker and Sheldon, I believe. Mm -hmm. so, that's kind of my verbal update for the month. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Any questions of staff? Yes, um, I had my hand up because I was just wondering, Kelly, if you have a really ballpark estimate of what kind of backlog due to the moratorium might be out there over the next couple months, things that would be ready to be uh, permitted. You know, it's a really good question. Unfortunately, I don't think I have an answer. I think I think more so than the moratorium, I think 362nd and Bell, when that's completed later this year, I think that's going to put some pressure on that area, that commercial area mainly, but there are some higher density residential areas off of Bell Street. I think there's gonna be some pressure to develop some of that area. Um, so that I think could be more of the backlog, I think is kind of development in that area. 
I think there are a subdivision or two that we, we could see move forward once the moratorium's lifted. Um, but, you know, I think with, you know, rising interest rates and also just the rising costs to build a home, I think it we are going to have a slowdown anyways, even without the moratorium. So I, I don't think there's as big of a backlog as there would have been, say, in 2018 or 2019 if the moratorium would have started then. Mm -hmm. um, Thank you. Yeah. So I know it's not a real answer, but I, I don't think a huge backlog actually at this point. No, I hadn't thought about the commercial backlog. That could be a big one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Your staff. All right. Well, we can move into our one public hearing this evening. And we will open that public hearing at 646. This is file number 22-037, design review and variance, Johnson RV canopy cover. <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Call for any uh, abstentions from the planning commission. I don't see or hear anything. Any conflicts of interest to declare? Nothing seen or uh, any ex parte contact to declare. Okay, nothing seen or heard. Any challenges uh, to members of the hearing body to the, anybody on the planning commission or the planning commission itself? Okay. If you testify, you must raise all issues you wish to address at this hearing. If your issue is not raised at this hearing, you may not be able to raise it later in any appeal. <clears throat> your comments should state why the application should or should not be approved or include your proposed modifications you believe are necessary for approval according to the standards. If you do not raise specific issues at the final evidentiary hearing or by close of the record, or fail to provide statements or evidence to allow the local government or its designee to respond to the issue, you will not be able to appeal the decision to the Land Use Board of Appeals based on that particular issue. Any party may request that the hearing be continued to a later date or that the record remain open after the hearing is closed. Failure of the applicant to raise constitutional or other issues relating to the proposed conditions of approval with sufficient specificity to allow the local government or its designee to respond to the issue precludes an action for damages in circuit court. With that, we'll turn it over to Shelley for staff report. Great, let me share my screen. <clears throat> So we're talking about um, uh, an addition to an existing building to Johnson RV, um, and that's important to keep in mind. So the request is to construct um, a little over a 7,000 square foot awning on the east side of an existing building with associated required improvements like parking and landscaping. Um, there were three specific requests, a design review, a type two variance, and a type three special variance. So, um, even though the planning commission is responsible for only deciding on that type three special variance, um, I'm still gonna present a little bit of kind of key information related to the design review and that type two variance. So the subject property is um, right at the uh, Southeast corner of 362nd and industrial way. Um, it's about 3.4 acres in size. The existing building um, that's on there. You can, I don't know how well you can see that, but there's the main industrial building as well as an office building uh, comes out to be about 22,000 square feet on the property. Um, <clears throat> the property, which is, there's lots of colors going on here, but um, the one outlined in orange right in the middle of the screen um, that is uh, designated I-2, that's light industrial. Um, 
you'll notice that there's quite a bit of different um, zoning kind of packed into this area. The red is commercial, that yellow um, to the south is uh, residential, and then that blue over to the west is um, industrial park. So this is uh, the existing site plan. Um, you can see the, that existing industrial building. That's about 20,000, 20.2 thousand square feet. Um, there is enough parking to accommodate that building. Um, you'll also notice quick orientation. You'll notice that we flipped the map. So north is now pointing left. Um, so over there on the, the west side onto 362nd is the only uh, current driveway access uh, into the property. So the proposal is this um, uh, 7.3 thousand square foot uh, canopy area. Um, a few important things to also call out in this site plan. Um, this driveway to 362nd, um, they're proposing moving it uh, a little to the south. Um, that's because the property immediately to the south also has a driveway under 362nd, and that will line up these two driveways on either side of 362nd. And then there's also a proposal to install an additional driveway um, to the north on industrial way, and that's specifically to maneuver um, RVs on and off the property. I should also mention exactly what this canopy cover is gonna be for. So uh, the applicant can correct me if I'm wrong, but it's for washing and providing maintenance to RVs. So a couple of key things that I wanted to call out with the design review. Uh, one of them is the landscape buffer. So um, our chapter on uh, the I-2 zoning district 1750 uh, requires a landscape buffer between industrial land uses and arterial roads. Um, based on a site visit, um, and then also looking at the proposed landscaping plan, it doesn't look like there's going to be uh, quite the adequate buffer that the intent of um, the chapter is requires. So we did include the condition um, in the staff report to uh, include additional uh, large evergreen trees. Um, and we specify capable of growing to at least 30 feet in height at a density that will create a visual screen within five years. So we did add that condition to try to ensure that the intent of that code section is met. Um, additionally, there was a little bit of analysis that we needed to do on those driveways. So um, section 1790 uh, requires authorization from the city engineer to have um, more than one driveway access on a lot that has more than 150 feet of street frontage. So this lot has 800 feet of street frontage because it's on the corner. Uh, still requires the authorization, which the both the, the city's traffic engineer and the city's civil engineer agree um, to um, driveways on this site does not pose any kind of safety or uh, congestion issues with our transportation network. Um, and then if you'll remember from that um, proposed site plan, they're proposing two separate driveways, one on 362nd, one on Industrial Way. Um, and yeah, yeah. So the second driveway, the city engineer says it's fine. So uh, 1798, which is the street and access chapter, requires authorization to set a driveway on an arterial road within 150 feet of an intersection. So that realignment of that driveway on the west onto 362nd um, is based on kind of a rough measurement is about 150 feet south, 105 feet south of the 362nd and industrial way intersection. Um, but um, according to the consulting with the city traffic engineer, um, it's justified, uh, because it, um, by aligning with that driveway to that property to the west makes sense. So a little bit about that type two variance. Um, the variance being requested is specifically to the roof pitch. 
So the code requires a roof pitch of three to 12 and the applicant is proposing a roof pitch of two to 12. And the reasoning for that is that the existing building has a two to 12 roof pitch and it would look weird to have a canopy at a different roof pitch. Um, so just a little diagram. Um, so you can get an idea of what, what those numbers mean. So the proposed roof pitch of two to 12 is a little flatter than the required roof pitch of three to 12, but not by a whole lot. Um, this is one of the architectural elevations where you can see how the roof pitch, that two to 12 roof pitch of the canopy cover uh, aligns with the existing roof pitch of the building. Um, so staff, our recommendation is to approve the type two variants um, for the sake of matching the existing architecture that's on the site. So what planning commission needs to discuss and make a decision on is this type three special variance. Um, that request was to waive sidewalk improvements along industrial way. And the reasoning for that is that our currently adopted transportation system plan in the capital improvements projects list, uh, it includes industrial, industrial way um, at some point being realigned. So this is um, an image from the TSP. You can see industrial way over here, potential realignment paths um, at different uh, curve radii. So the kind of argument here is that um, it doesn't make sense to construct a sidewalk along a part of a street that at some point in the near future is planned to um, be realigned with new sidewalks put in anyway. Um, so in a section or in chapter 1766, which is the chapter that deals with adjustments and variances, um, there are three review criteria related to a type three special variance, but only one of them needs to be met. And the one that is applicable in this case is um, in 1766-80A, which uh, says the unique nature of the proposed development is such that the intent and purpose of the regulations and of the provisions to be waived will not be violated. An authorization of the special variance will not be materially detrimental to the public welfare and will not be injurious to other property in the area when compared with the effects of development otherwise permitted. So we didn't receive any public comments from any um, surrounding property owners saying that this was gonna be an issue. Um, there's no reason to believe that not having a sidewalk uh, for the period of time up until that gets realigned, until industrial way gets realigned is going to be in any way materi materially detrimental um, to the public welfare, nor will it uh, affect uh, surrounding properties, property values, anything like that. Um, and in fact, um, one could argue that um, requiring the sidewalk at this point only to tear it out with the realignment actually creates unnecessary construction nuisance um, by doing the same project twice unnecessarily. So the condition that was recommended to us by our traffic engineer is for the applicant to pay a fee in lieu of sidewalk improvements um, uh, according to an approved engineer estimate. So um, it would be the applicant's responsibility to submit an itemized engineer estimate um, for sidewalk and street tree installation along that industrial way footage. And they would then pay that fee in lieu um, to help the city offset the cost of those road improvements with the industrial way realignment. Um, and then very briefly, there was a requested change by the applicant to one of the conditions. Um, so the existing condition, uh, the intent of that condition is basically to make sure that um, there's not just a, a lot of visual clutter related to storage of merchandise on the property. Um, and so the applicant requested this proposed change uh, to that condition um, to make it a little more specific um, regarding displaying recreational vehicles for sale, um, which staff is fine with that proposed change. Um, we believe that it meets the intent of 
to what it was we were trying to condition. So our recommendation is that um, Planning Commission approve the application uh, with the type three special variance with the conditions as detailed in the staff report. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> Any questions for Shelley before we move on? Looks like Jan has a question. Yeah, I don't have a screen with oh. the individual. Okay. Um, I just wanted to ask Shelley, it looks like the realignment of industrial way abuts right up against the corner of the existing building is, are there dimensions there that I'm not seeing? No, you're correct. Oh, I should not unmute that. Uh, you're correct. Um, so the what's in the TSP, this diagram that's in the TSP is conceptual. Um, it's not nece necessarily the case that the realignment is going to look like this, um, but it is in the capital improvement projects list um, to ensure that industrial way is realigned with, uh, with its, itself over on the west side, <laughs> west of 362nd. It's twin. Uh, Kelly can probably speak to that a little bit more, um, that kind of difference between a conceptual plan and uh, an actual site plan. Um, and what that means for this property. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Along those same lines, I mean, what's, I know city council and everybody's been working on that TSP and discussing priorities. And I mean, it's taken them forever to build 360 second bell, which I know is a much bigger project. I mean, what's the likelihood of this actually getting funded? Where's it lit out on the priority list? For the next five, 10, 15 years. I mean, what's that? Is it actually going to happen? I know just because it's on the list doesn't necessarily right. mean that anybody actually wants to do it anytime soon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, let me pull up the. Yeah, it's, it won't happen in the next five years. I can tell you that. Um, we, we unfortunately only have $11 million for the next 20 years, and right. we have. I don't know. I, I forget what the number is. Two hundred million dollars in <laughs> in street projects, something like that, plus a four or five hundred million dollar bypass. So, mm -hmm. um, you can do the math real quick. And there's not a lot of projects that are going to get funded. Um, however, there will be a transportation system development charge increase that will likely happen um, associated with the TSP adoption. We've already hired FCS group out of Tacoma to to analyze and look at that. And then most likely at some point. Um, there'll have to be some other consideration for something to raise more funds. I mean, there's going to have to be, and uh, I'll stay away from what that could be, but uh, they'll have to be, because otherwise there's going to be very little, if any road projects done here over the next 20 years, um, they just cost too much now. Mm -hmm. So th this definitely won't be a five-year project, but I do, I do see it being a project in that 20 year horizon. Um, it's not on the top. It's not in like the top priority list though, like the funded list mm -hmm. with 11 million. Right. But if, if we if we get more money over the next 20 years, it could make the next cut, definitely. Yeah, I'm just looking at the, um, the TSP. It looks like there are two proposed projects um, related to intersections owned by the city of Sandy. One of those is the 362nd and industrial realignment. Um, oh, is that the current TSP? Yeah, the 2011 yeah. TSP with projected cost in $2,009. So add 10% to $3.3 million. Um, yeah. Um, so yeah, that the, I guess the short answer to your question is we don't know when this is going to be built. We don't know when this is going to be realigned. Um, but we do know that it is in the capital improvement project list um, to be done at some point in the future. Um, and that is a very unsatisfying answer. Hmm. Uh, yeah, but with, with the fee and loo from the applicant and with the increased uh, transportation SDCs, um, there's you know the likelihood that we'll be able to start picking up steam on some of these projects in the TSP. Thank you. And it doesn't seem like there's a lot of foot traffic in that area. No, that's right. correct. Yeah. yeah. No, you're right. 
Yeah, I don't know who would be walking to um, get their RV washed. There is quite a bit of foot traffic on 362nd, but yeah, not. I don't think there's many people looking to go east on Industrial Way. Not that I'm aware of. No. Like why? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and you can, you know, you if you if you use the trails and the um, sidewalks around there, you can actually go up to the highway and then go on a path that's grade separated from the highway, which I believe actually. Uh, uh, Tracy, who's in the room here, he actually planted a lot of what, the trees along there. And that's actually a pretty nice walking corridor. I I use that when I like jog around town. I wouldn't use industrial. Like, I just wouldn't. Because then you have driveways and everything that you're having to pay attention to. If you got to the highway to that sidewalk, it's just there's no there's no obstructions. You can just go for about a third of a mile there. And then it also looks like if somebody did need to walk on that section of industrial way, um, I just... Um, verified this with a Google Street View. Um, there are sidewalks on that north side of Industrial Way that were, uh, I imagine, installed as part of um, the uh, development of that property to the north. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, we'll move on to applicant's presentation. The floor is yours. Good evening. My name is Tracy Brown, 17075 Fur Drive in Sandy. I'm Lanny's planning consultant. I worked with a team of Ray Moore and Lance Forney of All County Surveyors, Mike Ard, who did the uh, transportation study, and we have Blaine uh, doing the architecture. Scohetti, I think is his last name, how it's spelled. So at this point, I'm going to ask Robert Murray from All Johnson RV to come up and just introduce himself. We'll talk about the project and then I'll come back up and uh, just give a brief uh, overview of our perspective on the staff recommendation. Mm -hmm. All right, as you said, I am Robert Murray from Johnson RV um, and we are excited to grow our business uh, in the city of Sandy. Um, this property would allow us to expand business and to bring some of our current 120 employees that are the north or the east location there down here closer to town uh, will be more accessible and give us the space we need to continue to grow our business. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. It's just going to be a service facility. Uh, customer, the, the public's not going to come there. It's mostly just for internal work where we clean the RVs, fix them up, and then we send them to this store or the store up in uh, Tacoma, Washington for sale. So there won't be public customers on this property it's just for our own internal use um, and it'll be better for our employees because they'll be closer to town which means they'll be shopping at Fred Meyers and eating lunch and stuff rather than having to drive into town or go to the one little gas station up the street from where we are now um, and it will also keep as many people from leaving for lunch from there crossing the highway coming all the way into town so it's a safety thing for me too it's better to bring all our people closer to town and uh, they could actually walk down the new sidewalk we are going to provide across the street over into that Fred Meyer complex. So, yeah, we're excited to continue to grow our business here and um, and invest some money into that piece of property. It's been vacant for a while, so it needs a little love, but um, we'll get all the trees up to snuff and get it painted and make it look a little better and at the same time provide what we need for our business. So. I have 120 currently at this location. Um, probably when it's all said and done, the, the Sandy Johnson RV will employ 130 to 135 people. Uh, we use this as our corporate headquarters. We have three other stores, Tacoma, Washington, Medford, Oregon, and Gilroy, California. Uh, and all of the corporate stuff is from here. So well, actually a lot of my employees that are here now in mul multiple departments have relocated to Sandy and purchased homes here and have families here and now they're in the school system here. So uh, it's been kind of neat to see as we've grown the amount of people that came to join our team. Uh, it's a pretty cool culture of young families that have moved to town and I can and consider that, you know, see more of that, you know, as we continue to grow and service our other locations. So any other questions for me? Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. I just thought it'd be good to have Robert kind of introduce himself and kind of talk about the, you know, their uh, presence in the city of Sandy and 
what they want to do on that site. So, yeah, I mean, and I don't have a lot to say, you know, in reviewing, we kind of went through at a, at a uh, team meeting, went through each and every condition and finding, and that was the only one that uh, D3 was the only one that caught her eye, you know, and probably the way it was worded could work. And we were just a little concerned that the use of the word merchandise could be construed to mean storage of vehicles getting repaired could be considered merchandise because they technically are. And then they will, you know, after the repair, then they'll be moved up to the site, the sales site. So, the, and so I thought the, the language I offered was a little more specific, um, you know, they don't have any intent to sell anything from that site. It's all focused on repair, fix it up, and then move it to the various other locations. So with that, you know, we are, as uh, Shelly mentioned, requesting the type two variance to the roof pitch. Um, there have been other examples of that variance being granted. I think the uh, US Metal Works, where the bus barn is, uh, they received a similar variance. And then the type three special variance to the fronted improvements, we felt like that made sense. And the recommended condition to pay a fee in lieu of seemed reasonable to us and uh, the applicant. So with that, we would, uh, you know, recommend that you approve it as uh, recommended by staff. You know, if there's any questions for me from folks on Zoom or in the room. Mm -hmm. I say anything. Uh, okay. I did have oh, actually one other question. Um, I read there was mention of uh, uh, dumping being installed. Was that just for uh, RVs that you guys are servicing, not open to the public? Absolutely. All right. Perfect. Yeah, and there's also a um, oil grease separator recommended to be installed, and that's connected to the wash associated with the wash bay. So the you know the water that comes off of that bay will go through the oil grease separator before it gets put into the um, city's sanitary system. Perfect. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, we'll move into opportunity for public testimony. Um, and we will be asking, I'll be calling for a testimony in favor and then testimony that's not in favor and then any neutral testimony. So if you are um, listening or watching and you want to um, give testimony, if you're on the Zoom call, just click the raise hand icon and wait to be recognized by Kelly. If you're on the telephone, uh, dial star nine and that will raise your hand and again, wait to be uh, recognized. <clears throat> so we'll begin with asking for any testimony that is in favor of the proposal. I don't see any hands raised. Okay. And we'll move on to any testimony that is against the proposal. Again, I do not see any hands raised. Okay, nothing seen. And finally, for any neutral testimony, if you are neither uh, in favor or opposed necessarily, just uh, have a comment in general nature about the uh, proposal. Again, no hands raised. Okay. Shelly, do you have any recap to offer? No. That doesn't give you much. You don't need to. You do you want to rebut her silence? <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> we will. Um, since the applicant's representative is in the is in the room, we'll keep the public hearing open while we. Uh, while the commission discusses. Questions, observations, uh, something you want to clarif clarification on for any commissioner? Uh, I can start. Um, for the, not that it'll actually matter considering that the realignment would take out this whole chunk, but the, um, the 20 foot tree buffer on 
side of the property that the sidewalks being um, uh, possible variants for. Is that including room for that sidewalk there? So we're not taking the sidewalk out of that 20 foot buffer. So essentially there's 26, 28 feet of buffer then? Um, well, the whole property layout would change with that right. realignment. Um, so is your question, um, does the, the proposed 20 foot buffer include space for the sidewalk? The, the goal of the question is to make sure that when we do eventually put in a sidewalk, mm -hmm. that there would still be 20 feet of vegetation buffer there that we're not cutting out of that 20 feet and leaving 10 or 6 or 14 feet. Yeah, that would that would have to be something that would be determined with the future design review of um, the realignment and the those improvements. Um, yeah, that'd be a, that's actually pretty complicated because it would be taking out part of the building. Mm -hmm. um, so I, th I think a big chunk of what's so expensive about that realignment is basically the takings of property rights. So not only are we taking a swath of that property, we're also taking on an existing two-story building and we're kind of splitting the property in two, which is making the, it has to make the value quite a bit less. Right, and so that's kind of where I get, I guess the second part of my worry with this is that we're holding, we're not putting in the sidewalk because this is happening so soon that it makes sense to just get money. Mm -hmm. But yet, if it's happening so soon, why are these those nice folks spending so much money on this property to just take it all out with a road? You know, like yeah, yeah, and maybe banking. I mean, I, I like banking money. I like having extra money, especially when there's a sidewalk on the other side of the street. Mm -hmm. But it just doesn't make the argument that it's happening so soon that we should just keep the money. Doesn't make sense to me if they're doing all of these improvements that we're just going to then have to pay them for in order to get the property back because their property value is going to go up. Mm -hmm. So that property is even more expensive after we approve this. Right. I guess the question would be then is, well, what's the alternative? You know, um, require them to build the sidewalk that yeah. that money might be better used um, as invested by the city. Um, as opposed to going to a redundant sidewalk, even if that redundancy is gonna come 20 years from now. Um, yeah, it's a lot of uh, trying to tell the future. Yeah. You know? I mean, if, you know, I just see a situation down the road where that sidewalk could have been a benefit to somebody, yeah. right? And it's not there. So somebody's walking in the street and we had the choice to put it in 15, 10 years ago. And we didn't because we thought this might happen one day, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. We have the code that says sidewalks should be put on both sides of the street, you know, yeah. for a reason. Mm -hmm. And um, that being said, I do like money. I like keeping money. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's just where I'm at uh, yeah. for other commissioners on that. Yeah, there's two ways to look at that, too. So the, so we, we take 110% of the cost. So if you know 25 years down the line this happened, it's not going to cover the sidewalk. But you know that's just a gamble the city would have to take. Um, however, if we decide in five years that we want to put the sidewalk in in the right of way, we'll have that money sitting aside. So the city could go forward and put in the sidewalk with the fee and lieu amount that they'd be paying, or we can just retain it in the hopes of using it for the realignment in the future. The other nice thing is when we have money sitting in the bank like that, it's additional money we can lend against. Um, so every, you know, every ten thousand dollars you have in there is just more lending ability. So I do, I do like having that because, like I said, we don't have a lot of money for transportation. So. Yeah, and thank you. And I think that's the point that I needed. Uh, maybe was the we don't have to keep it forever. We can wait and wait for the realignment if it's decided that that's too far in the future. We can go ahead and we definitely can, yeah. To go ahead it, and make that. So I think that's the piece that I needed yeah. on that. So thank you. Yeah. There's right away there that we could move forward with the sidewalk. If you know, say three or four or five years from now, we said, no, nah, actually we're not gonna do the realignment anymore. We could we could use that money and build the sidewalk yeah. and that's the piece that I need to be reminded of. Uh so with that, I think I am okay with both variances. The um as far as the condition change goes, um, not that I think this is necessarily gonna happen, but 
when we just specify recreational vehicles. Um, I think part of the intent of that condition was also like any extra parts or inventory that might sit that are not necessarily just the vehicle, um, you know, that could be placed in a repair yard, you know, trailers or, you know, pieces of trailers, or I don't know, whatever it is that, you know, folks use in store. Um, but I think as far as that visual clutter, to me, it's less about the recreational vehicles and more about that type of thing. Can you put up on the screen that um, that D three, the original and the yes proposal? I can't find it in the emails right now. Yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm good. I'm okay with the proposed cha change. It is. It is restrictive, and that it only refers to uh, vehicles for sale. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, at what point is it for sale? <laughs> because uh, you know, is it for sale while they're repairing it? or washing it, or does it become for sale when it's off the property in a lot? Mm. Um, I, you know, I'm not nervous that it's going to be abused or anything. I'm trying to figure, did you have a question, Chris? Yeah, I didn't know if I was able to. Well, Where the public is hearing is still open and we'll, we'll, we'll put you in an official role and, and, and give you the opportunity. So. I was just gonna offer it alternative suggested to that if somebody was uncomfortable with the revised, revised changes couldn't you just authorize them to have recreational vehicles on the lot um, as as it says here um, storage for merchandise and or related materials unless authorized you could simply authorize um, recreational vehicles to be stored on the lot mm -hmm. um, and yeah it has the same purpose um we do want to specify that uh not recreational vehicles that are inventory for sale um, that it's the only storage of recreational vehicles on the property is specifically for those vehicles that are being washed or uh, repaired. Repaired, yeah. You know, they're gonna they're gonna have to pull one out of a bay to get another one in to, mm -hmm. to repair it and park it for mm -hmm. two or three days while the thing's in, and they're they'll be moving things back and forth all the time, but they'll be whole for the most part. <laughs> <laughs> when i first read it and saw the word merchandise i just thought of things that you sell i, I was going to look merchandise up in the dictionary um, and because i i don't know i think of it as merchandise as things you're selling not not like a toolbox mm -hmm. as merchandise I, mm -hmm. that's what i think of you did. You do have the city attorney on the call if you want to get his input. Oh. <laughs> I mean, I don't know if you, if you if you feel it's worth it or not. He is on the call. No, I I don't think it's well. If he wants to speak <laughs> to it, uh, so we can get a. Or is the definition of merchandise? Is that, is that the question? Well, that was just one that I was wondering about in the original one. But if we if we take it out of the proposal, yeah, it doesn't matter. The, um, the original condition, as I had originally written it, is pulled directly from the code. Um, and at, when we can take the intent of the code and make it very specific and apply it to a very specific case, I think that's generally a good practice. And that's what this proposed revision does, is it takes the intent of, we don't want a lot of visual clutter of a sales lot, um, and makes it specific to this application. I think, I think it's not just clutter either though. I think it's also just um, like the transportation impact study probably didn't evaluate it for a sales lot. Mm -hmm. So the improvements that are happening transportation wise are for the purpose that uh, Johnson RV is intending to use it for. And that's for 
uh, fixing RVs. The other thing too is I think if it did morph into a sales lot, then I think then we want the sidewalk because <laughs> yeah. a lot of more people walking around and milling about. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah. yeah, and you do have a commissioner with their hand up, Commissioner Pullen. Okay, Commissioner Pullen, go ahead. Would it be feasible to take the language from the original where it says and or related materials and just add that to the recreational vehicles and or related materials for sale? Okay, that would be the applicant shall not use the outdoor portion of the property as storage for. I think what she's saying is um, on that, the bottom one, the applicant shall not use the outdoor portion of the property to store or display recreational vehicles and or related materials for sale. Oh, well display recreational vehicles for sale and or related materials unless authorized. And then you run into the question of, okay, what are related materials? Exactly. Like, yeah. yeah, I guess what I'm thinking of is, and I don't even know if this happens, but you know, a crate of, uh, you know, wastewater tanks that are waiting to be installed or, mm -hmm. you know, uh, a pallet of, um, <laughs> you know, stoves or I don't know, whatever you stick in a, you know, in an RV and you have these pallets just kind of sitting yeah. around the lot. That's, I guess, what I'm thinking of. I'm not necessarily thinking of it as a for sale place, but I'm thinking, you know, not that I've driven by your place many times. It's always very nice, but uh, and professional looking, but, you know, you do drive by some of these places and these repair yards and they just have all of their extra parts mm -hmm. strewn about their yard, right? And that's, I guess, when I read the original that I was, that's what I pictured in my head was that I was trying to prevent us all of that extra stuff. Mm -hmm. So how do we put that in words? That's clear and objective. <laughs> I guess I kind of comment a couple things on that real quick. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, you want to just clutch so, Yeah, that gets you on the yeah, recording. So I can understand the concern. Um, one thing you guys should know is we don't work on all the chassis part of the RV. We just work on the house part. So anything that comes in cannot sit outside. So that's why we have the canopy and why we have the, build, the building the size that we do. Like all of those parts and pieces, I mean, they're highly valuable and they're designed to go inside, obviously, the RV like a home. So um, we can't really let any of that stuff sit outside. Um, and then, it, you know, that would obviously cost me a lot of money if all the stuff sat outside <laughs> and went bad. So, um, yeah, the, the intent is not to have anything out there at all. Um, that's, and even in the design review thing, we have a spot designed for the detail stuff where it's all enclosed behind the, behind the building. Uh, it's just RVs going to sit there while they, like you said, go in and out of the bay until they're finished, and then they go out the driveway to the store. So there's no intent to have anything other than just RVs mm -hmm. outside, mm -hmm. if that helps at all. <laughs> Probably, if, I think if we did add the related materials into the proposal, that that would just kind of cover everything. That would not, not that we are distrusting, but covers our back. Due diligence. I mean, it, and it does say unless authorized. So if there's a special request, I can authorize it. Mm -hmm. So it would be, uh, should not use it for, to store, display recreational vehicles or related materials. Mm -hmm. The verb is still store unless authorized. I think that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Okay with that? Yeah, I can change that. I don't know that, it, you know, it's not a light year change, but. Include the word for sale in here? Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, this, is, this is why I got a master's degree in planning. Um, so the applicant shall not use the outdoor portion of the property to store or display recreational vehicles for sale and or related materials is different from the applicant shall not use the outdoor portion of the property to store or display recreational vehicles and or related materials for sale. Correct. Unless authorized. So which one do we want to? My <laughs> thought was yeah. that the sale part would only relate to the recreational vehicles. Okay, that's mine too. 
Yeah. That's my interpretation. And that the other materials would not necessarily be for sale. Yeah. Okay. Yep. We can change that. And then it does have the less authorized. So if there is some special right. thing where we don't feel it's cluttered, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It gives us flexibility too to work with them on a case case by case basis. He calls you up and says, I got I got a special deal on a boatload of stoves. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have a place to put them. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And I, I also think this is like a, a good opportunity to trust, I mean, trust the market, right? A private business owner who's trying to make their lot look nice and look presentable is not going to have a whole bunch of clutter. Um, but this condition does allow that if, if for some reason they decided to make it into an RV junkyard, um, that we would be able to say, oh, you're not... Uh, uh, appropriately meeting mm -hmm. this condition. Yeah. All right. Any other comments? We had two conditions the sidewalk and the roof pitch. Any concerns on the roof pitch? Sure made sense to me. Mm -hmm. I just can't imagine a, a P12. We could have made them put a faux roof on top of the existing building at a 312, <laughs> um, but no, we're not going to do that. On this, while well, you have this up, you've got the north awning and south awning. Yeah, so it's, uh, it's articulated. So um, if I go back up to the proposed site plan, you'll see that a portion of the awning over here in oh, north okay. is actually okay. a, a little more shallow. The back part overhangs in yeah. a sense. All right. Yeah. Makes sense. Okay. Uh, if nobody has a concern, first thing we need to do is close the public hearing. I move to close the public hearing. I second. And, okay. Been moved and seconded and seconded to close the public hearing at 7 32 p.m all in favor say aye aye aye, aye. aye. okay any opposed i, I doubt it but i think everybody's an aye yep <laughs> but we can move right into a motion unless somebody has some other burning thing they want to talk about Uh, the motion just needs to be to to approve with staff recommendations. And I move to I move to approve with staff recommendations and the change of wording on the um what was that the condition merchandise yeah on the condition thank you. I'll second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. To approve file 22-037 with the um, staff recommendations, including the rewording of condition D3. Take a roll call vote. Oh, sorry. Uh, Commissioner Wagner? Yes. Commissioner Pullen? Yes. Commissioner Hook? Yes. Commissioner Lee? Yes. And Chairman Crosby. Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Look forward to seeing that there. That building's been sitting sitting ugly for a long time. Yeah. And I was uh, I was surprised by the number of employees you had. I think we're the second largest in town behind Fred Meyer. I think. I wouldn't have guessed that. I mean that you had that many. Great. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Well, there's no further comments or questions or concerns. We can adjourn. Okay. We will adjourn. Seven thirty-four. Everybody. I love it. Thanks. <laughs>